Hello, this is Dr. Rosie Kuhn, and this podcast series is called Aging Like a Guru, Who Me? So this this uh, thought for today started out with the idea of what it takes in terms of training yourself to think differently, to think positively, to have positive thoughts versus negative thoughts in a sense that um, our negativity creates um, negative circumstances. It's researched. We know that. And the same with positivity. When we um, think positive thoughts and have positive experiences, it increases good things inside of us, both uh, physically and emotionally and spiritually. So the the idea of sustainability, of how to create positive sustainability of our positive being and positive well-being takes training. And uh, so that was sort of the start of what I wanted to intend for this uh, this podcast today. And... Um, and so I started to think about different things about this. And uh, part of that is that we are, you are in this moment, the culmination of everything that has ever happened on this planet. You are the culmination of that. You're the culmination of all of the efforts of your ancestors. You are the culmination of every incarnation that you've ever been through. This is the the pinnacle, if you will, of everything that has occurred on the planet up till now. Now that's a big deal, right? Because you can go, and I know I went. Oh my God, I'm I'm damned to hell. <laughs> this is terrible. If this is as good as it gets, um, and the thing is, it's not. Uh, it's not that this is as good as it gets, but this is as good as it is. This is the isness of everything that has come before. So inside you, though, is this not only all of the efforts and all of the uh, experiences, but all of the traumas. We know, again, through research, that uh, your DNA carries the traumas and the experiences of your of your ancestors. And I believe that it also carries the, incarna- the, um, the vibrations of your own incarnation, the memory. We call that karma, right? We carry, call, call it karma. So a lot of people have experiences. They, uh, uh, PTSD, in a sense, is what we come into the world with because we carry this from our ancestors who've gone through incredible horrors, especially if you've gone through for instance, your um, family went through, as all, most of ours have, the World War One, World War Two, where people were, you know, just millions and millions of people, the genocide of so many people, so many parts of the world. So we carry that with us. Now, that's, um, that's part of what causes, I think, the PTSD re- responses, the, tr- the trauma of, of anxiety as we carry this, oh my God, what's going to happen kind of thing. So, the other element that I want to say about that is that uh, many of us uh, know of, of people in or- orphanages, I should say children in orphan- orphanages, where um, the diagnosis quite often for children who died was the failure to thrive. Now, there were so many children in so many orphanages that couldn't get attention. They couldn't get held. And so in that place, they 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 didn't thrive they felt um i'm you know they just feel the experience of of hopelessness and and it's not like they have the words for that because these are little infants but there's no holding and no holding there's no care there's no connection and and so in our in the knowing of the being there's this place it's like uh, i'm just going to check out and so we do I think that, you know, I, I was thinking that the term death by aging is one that I think <laughs> this uh, these podcasts kind of focus on. It's like, what is the interpretations that we make about aging? What is it that come up because of, of this thing called aging? I've got air quotes going. Uh, in a sense that we think of elderly, we think of um, long-term care facilities, we think about isolation, we think about the depletion of of health and vitality. In a sense, we get to a point perhaps of this thought of failing to thrive because there's a a lack of hope, there's a lack of meaning for so many people. In fact, um, suicide rates have gone up like 30% since 19, for in the last 20 years. And there's a higher suicide rate among elderly people. And there's a higher uh, percentage of, 
of people in there uh, who are elderly who actually uh, are successful in those uh, suicide attempts. And that's basically because there's a, the sense of meaning that, and, and hopelessness that, that occurs. Uh, Viktor Frankl, in his book, um, In Search of Meaning, Man in Search of Meaning, talks about, um, in a sense, existential experiences. And in looking at the Holocaust, people who, who, who lived in the Holocaust and those that survived and had the, the capacity survived, they had a sense of meaning and they had a sense of holding something important within them that made life meaningful. And one of the things that he talks about is that, you know, most of us experience life as suffering. To live is to suffer. But to survive requires to, the uh, individual finds meaning in living and suffering. And when we get older, for many of us, if we don't have a perspective or a way to see life or experience life, without meaning, then we thrive, we, we, we fail to thrive, and we just deplete. This happens quite often in nursing homes and long term care facilities, where there may be too many people and not enough staff to, to provide a sense of connection and a, 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 a sense of, of uh, value or significance for an individual. And when we feel that less level of insignificance in our orientation of who we are, we fail to th- uh, to <laughs> fail to th- <laughs> fail to thrive. A little bit of a tongue twister there. I think this happens not only for people in 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 um, who are aging, and that's all of us, but in the corporate world, there's a lot of people who feel the soullessness of those experiences. They're there, and they feel they have no significance. They just do their job like a robot, and then um, they get to go home. But that that place is also a a place of failing to thrive. So coming back to the sense of how do we create a positivity in environments that seem to be lacking uh, capacities, and it comes down to who we are in ourselves, this place of we have inside of us that has a wisdom and a knowing of uh, and an ability to create meaning where we may appear there may appear to be no meaning um, we have the capacity to train ourselves to come from um, come out of what we consider to be oppressive and repressive circumstances to empower ourselves to see it differently and experience it differently now it takes training <laughs> to do this and everybody you know i would love that these podcasts and podcasts by anyone who's doing these podcasts kind of things where we're trying we're wanting to inspire people that in that inspiration the epiphany happens the the um revolutions and evolution and the um unfolding happens in such a way that you're done with all that suffering stuff and no need to train you just got it but the the fact of the matter is is that um, training yourself to uh, have this level of positivity in your life, any level of positivity creates uh, requires training. Just like when we were learning the ABCs, we had to go through it over and over. We had to, you know, really focus on what comes after, you know, L. What comes after P? And I still have that problem <laughs> with that. Or learning our multiplication tables. Um, learning to read, learning um, angles or space, uh, learning to drive. We had to practice and practice and practice. And somehow we think that we should automatically be inspired in such a way with things like this, life-changing, life orientations, that it should be, oh, I'm inspired, I get it now, and that that should be enough. But we have to train ourselves over and over to think differently. And that might mean just a sense of uh, value, of giving yourself self a sense of value, or being able to give yourself, um, a, a pers- knowing your own perspective, knowing that, hey, this is how I feel. This is my truth about what my experience is. And to start to own that for yourself is a really, really 
important start. Uh, again, people who uh, work in corporations uh, and say, well, everyone else is dealing with this level of stress. Everyone else is putting in 12 hours a day. Everyone else, so who am I to complain or who am I to have this, uh, have this experience or have this truth? It's like, that's the point. You are you, and this is the experience that you're having. You are um, having the truth <laughs> the experience and you are having a truth about that and to own that is the beginning of really empowering yourself to to greater and greater degrees of, of sustainability of more positive um, outlooks and positive outlooks will bring you uh, positive well-being today tomorrow and for the rest of your life so to age like a guru to to really engage your inner inner guru um, requires this level of training to go against ancestral uh, experiences of trauma and ex and anxi anxiety and horror and and perhaps lack of meaning and lack of thriving, and to train yourself to greater degrees of of truth and uh, and knowing that that is what is for your peace and well being. That's it for today. I'm sending you big hugs and love, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.